Hi guys. Hi guys! Welcome back to Molly Does Disney. We are Marianne and Ollie together with Molly Does Disney. And we do Disney vlogs, Disney tips and tricks videos, and um, we've also just started a brand new series called Great Moments in Disney History. So Ooh. please check out um, our video on The Jungle Book if you haven't already. Please subscribe, make sure you click that notification icon to get all the new Disney content that yes. we're going to be putting out here. Today's video, however, is going to be about the Disney parks, and more specifically, Disneyland Paris. You may have already seen our video of our top five rides and attractions in the Disneyland Park in Paris. Uh, if not, please check it out uh, below the little box floating above one of our heads at the moment. So this is the second part of our video. Uh, whilst the other one was focusing purely on attractions in Disneyland, yeah. this one is going to be focusing purely on the Walt Disney Studios Park. The Studios Park has been making guests feel like part of the movie ever since it opened in um, March in 2002. Um, it's dedicated to all things show business and movies, including um, a lot of behind the scenes elements. It's often perceived by the Disney fandom, including us, as the, um, as the smaller, less magical and less idyllic counterpart of um, the Disneyland Park and the ugly sister to uh, Hollywood Studios in, <laughs> in Walt Disney World. But it does have some fantastic rides and attractions. So without further ado, let's get on with the list. Our fifth favourite ride or attraction at the Walt Disney Studios Park is Ratatouille L'Aventure Totalement Touqué de Rémy. <laughs> Yay! Or Ratatouille Remy's Totally Zany Adventure. Probably even in my rubbish French accent it sounds. It sounds a lot better. Yeah. It? <laughs> this is one of the best newer rides at Disneyland Paris. Definitely one of the best rides the entire park has to offer. Um, it's located in the beautifully themed Ratatouille area, which is called Place de Remy. Literally Paris, but cleaner. Yeah. And it's sat right next to Toy Story Playland. Yeah, it's what you want Paris to be. The ride itself is one of the most popular rides that the entire resort has to offer. Um, and it opened in July 2014. It's 4D Dark Ride, as inspired by the 2007 Disney Pixar film, Ratatouille. Uh, it shrinks you right down to the size of a rat. You become like Remy's little friend, uh, his little rat companion. Yeah. And you hop in your own little rat mobile, which is actually really, really cool. It looks like a little dodger that's, mm. uh, that's shaped like a little rat. Something. Yeah, and they use trackless technology, so it's a lot more up to date than, yeah, than other dark rides. It seems very park. seamless. You're chased by Chef Skinner through all of the Sight, sounds and smells of Gaston's Parisian restaurants. Um, so it's a combination of trackless ride technology and 3D screens uh, to make the guests feel really immersed. Um, it's a lot more immersive than other traditional dark rides such yeah. as uh, Pinocchio because they really follow through with the whole theming of scale and the fact that you are strong down to the size of a rat. But this is a uh, similarly themed to how they do in the restaurant where they have sort of a cocktail umbrella is then like the size of a massive yeah. Brother, yeah. Sort of thing. So it's all about that kind of forced perspective. Yeah. So they do they do that really, really well. They do. Which is what people seem to sort of really praise this ride on. That is what gives it all of the best reviews. This is why people like it. The theming of the Ratatouille ride is beautifully quaint on the outside to match um, the rest of Place du Remy. And it transports you to the rooftops of Paris of an evening um, as you listen to the beautiful Parisian inspired soundtrack which was composed by Michael Giacchino for the film. The ride, which at the moment is uh, unique to Disneyland Paris, that is until Walt Disney World France Pavilion in Epcot has their own version too. And because it's so popular and one for all the family, it's one to definitely use Fast Pass or the single rider line for. And it's pretty obvious that Disneyland Paris was really wanting Place de Remy and the Ratatouille ride to be really, really popular things to sort of draw people into the studios part because as we said it is sort of perceived as the existing yeah thing. pretty much yeah so um they were sort of looking to prepare for the long queue which is why they brought in the fast pass and also it cost them 217 million dollars to make so I think that's an investment well paid off because it is one of the factors that sort of draws people into the studio. Number four on our list is Crush's Coaster. This is inspired by Disney Pixar's 2003 movie Finding Nemo. Crush Coaster is a spinning, twirling, twisting indoor and briefly outdoor roller coaster. Mm -hmm. uh, you go inside Crush's shell and it's twist you around as you ride through the East Australian current. It features some wonderful special effects to really immerse you inside the big blue world. DLP have made some efforts with the theming onto the exterior to make it look a lot like a hut on an Australian coast. Next one next to a huge round of blue rocks with that opening where you can see guests currently on the ride sort of flying past you as their shell was all about. So that every couple of years I will fly past. Yeah. Which, sort of yeah. Like, which gets you in the mood, you're like, oh my god, help me 
just in a minute, well that will be us in about an hour and a half time. <laughs> Once you get inside the building, you want something to feel like it's in Sydney Harbour. Because mm. uh, all the theming inside is so good and then they've got all of the seagulls sort of going around like Mine, mine, mine. Uh, so then Crush invites you aboard and it's sort of like Surf the dude sort of acts, he's like, Kai and Jill, dude! And then everyone just all pops in. And, and then he says it in French. The theme on the inside is just like really, it's really good. The rides got so many beautiful bright colours and projections and lights make you feel completely immersed. It sort of does really give you the impression that you're going on an adventure with Lilo and his friends. That is until you're whisked into the ocean's dark depths near a sunken submarine and you're suddenly surrounded by glowfish and jellyfish and all the scary things and then it's not so nice Oh, the sharks try to eat you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You like nearly fly into like Bruce's mouth and then we like, ah. Yeah, that's so scary. But just in time, the EAC um, sends you spiraling back all the way to Sydney Harbour and to safety. You do get a different ride experience each time you go on this ride because you can go either forwards or backwards and the weight distribution on the shell or in the shell <laughs> is a little bit different each time. So if for example, you have very small kids and you're a lot bigger than they are. If you sit, you and other parent or other guardian sits on one side, you have oh, two okay. little ones on the other side, the, it sort of adheres to whatever weight it's got. Yeah. And they can tip a lot more because they're much smaller, which is really cool. But not all children can go on this ride. You do have to be 107 centimeters tall to ride, which is probably because of all the like quick twists and turns and the non-stop motion that's going on on this ride. Um, it does only go 37.7 miles per hour, but with all the um, all the projections and the kind of um, effects that are going on around you, it does feel a lot faster. Since it's opening in June 2007, it uh, has been the one of the studio's most popular attractions like consistently. Mm -hmm. um, partly because it's unique to DLP, but also because it's still fairly new. Um, but for some reason, you can't actually get fast pass for it, which is like completely beyond us. And actually, when you think about it, it's not that new, it's a decade old. The only way to really skip the queue or to sort of shorten it is to get a single rider. You really need to get there first thing in the morning, just wake up, just rush straight there, and we actually mean first, first, yeah. first thing. No faffing um, around. So when last time we were there, um, we went there first thing, we got into the park, we went, we went straight to it and there was already an hour queue. Yeah. And we actually got into the park slightly early, but they actually let us through the gate about 10 minutes yeah. early. And there was like hardly any queue ahead of us. But by the time we got to Crush's Coaster, the queue was already an hour long and it was sort of worming all the way around to two studios and everything. Yeah, it's mad. And the only thing that uh, Disney's actually done to try and make the queue slightly more tolerable is that uh, they've installed with it like this little bit of Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. but you can't use it for like internet or oh. Twitter or anything like that. Anything useful, we're like, oh yeah, we can look up rides and stuff like that. And uh, at the time, it's like, uh, nope. Uh, you can play on it one little crush game where you're a turtle who's trying to eat some jellyfish. <laughs> Uh, which isn't really that exciting, but also the it only works in the first little bit of yeah, the outside the, area. Yeah, yeah. And the Wi-Fi keeps cutting out halfway through. And then probably because keep... everybody's on it trying to pass the time. On a lighter note, a fun fact about Crusher's Coaster was that it was going to be called Crusher's Turtle Twister originally, which we actually think is a little bit of a better name. I think name. that's a much better name actually. But Imagineers found that it might be a little bit of a tongue twister for um, for French people to try and say, so they decided to call it Crusher's Coaster. Yeah, but that's part of the fun. <laughs> part of the fun is that you can't say it. Number three is Mickey and the Magician, which is a wonderful, magical 20 minute musical show um, that takes place in the theatre in the Toon Studio area and it features uh, Mickey himself as well as familiar faces such as Cinderella, Belle the Beast, Rafiki and the Genie as well as songs from some of those Disney films as part of the story. It's a really really high quality show and it debuted on the 2nd of July 2016. Yeah it's sort of like West End sort of quality. Yeah it's like a, it's like a shorter um, show but sort of that high end that the, like the singing is great and the dancing is great. It's performed in both French and English. Uh, so Mickey asks the question in French, the magician responds in English, uh, so therefore you know things going on. Delves into the story of an amazing magician who asks Mickey to clean up his studio room. But while doing this, Mickey dreams of being a great magician himself. And while he's doing this, he sort of gets to talk into loads of inanimate objects and then he does loads of little magic tricks and they've got lots of like practical little magic tricks going on on the stage. Whilst this happens, um, loads of other Disney characters just sort of keep popping up and they have their own little story going on uh, and then all the other Disney friends 
they sort of encourage him to sort of pursue and to work harder being a magician. And then sort of by the end of it, he sort of realizes that real magic has no limits, especially if you believe in yourself and you have good imagination and you work hard and you have love to help you along the way. It's an all singing, all dancing show featuring cool illusion, lots of special effects, lots of really good dancing. You really do feel absorbed into the performance. Yeah. And it just goes by so quickly because it's only 20 minutes. One bit where Beauty and the Beast come on stage and they start doing little waltz and things like that and Mario just like bursts into just like, it's so beautiful. Of course I did. Of course I did. Yeah. And then you've got like Rafiki just like holding Simba off the end of the cliff like don't drop sort of thing. The show has even been recognised out of the park as being a really, really good show. It won the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions Award for Best Theatrical Production, which is pretty impressive. And that really does reflect um, on how great it is. It's also suitable for all ages, so it's something for all of the family to enjoy and it can take place up to five times a day um, and show times sort of differ depending on the season. Mickey and the Magician will be at Disneyland Paris until January the 7th next year, so 2018, and then again from the 31st of March until the 2nd of September 2018. So there's a break going on in between January and March, Maybe they'll bring something else into that theatre, who knows? In at number two, we have Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith. Uh, so it's a roller coaster with three inversions, plenty of twists, turns, uh, and it just blasts Aerosmith classics as you whiz through the air uh, up to 57 miles an hour. Um, it does the blast off at the start, mm. um, which goes from zero to 57 in 2.8 seconds, uh, which gives you like five Gs of G-force, which is quite, that's quite a lot. <laughs> Uh, it's been open in Studios Park since March 2002, actually, following the success of it at Disney World, which would be open since 99. Mm. Um, apparently, it's actually the still currently the fastest roller coaster in France. Rather than racing through LA in a stretch limo to an Aerosmith gig like you do in the Walt Disney World version, the story of Paris's version, which is located in the backlot area of the studios, is that Aerosmith, alongside some engineers, are creating a revolutionary new roller coaster. So after watching the pre-show, which features Aerosmith Steve Tyler hyping up the ride, you get to go to the testing area and ride the roller coaster that they're trying to create. So it's blasting music the whole time round. Um, it's got 120 onboard speakers, um, sort of spread throughout all the different seats. Uh, you get to hear Aerosmith's music like never before. As two massive Aerosmith fans, uh, we love hearing the music on the ride and we love singing along as we're flying around. But yeah, there's like tons of neon lights just flashing on Rock and Roller Coaster. There's whirling sounds to make it seem like you're going even faster than you are. Um, you do have to be 1.2 meters to ride this attraction. And luckily that is fast, fast as well, which um, makes the queue a bit more bearable as it can get quite long at times it is. But I say it is a very famous ride and it's one of Disneyland Paris's most thrilling rides. Finally, in at number one, our favourite ride at Disneyland Paris's Walt Disney Studios is the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. This is an awesome ride that opened in December 2007 and it invites you to step aboard and face your fears and plunge 13 floors into the Twilight Zone and you're falling amidst all the glamour of this haunted hotel. The ride makes you the star of a lost episode of the show The Twilight Zone um, and you get transported back to October 1939 and experience what it was like um, when the lightning struck the hotel. So it's a very intense ride especially compared to the rest of the stuff that so I say you're meant to be at Disney you know, it's like Mickey running around and stuff. Um, but it completely isolates you as well from the rest of the production courtyard where mm. it's separated because uh, you have to sort of go... When, when, the back. Yeah, you go around the back, out the way, so you sort of do feel a little bit off, which really is the feeling mm. um, but from the rest of the park. Uh, but so it really immerses you in this creepy atmosphere that they're going for. Um, even the sort of facade of this Tower of Terror is eerie. Um, once you step inside this once glamorous hotel of the stars, the ride's pre-show, um, you can't help but notice sort of all the spooky little dilapidated, dust-filled, eerie lobby sort of things all scattered around. Yeah. And things sort of all the furniture falling apart, all the dust cobwebs on everywhere. Yeah, and everyone's belongings. It's almost as if everybody left in a hurry. We hear the sort of 1930s sort of style jazz music, which has become sort of so ominous and so sort of associated with this ride. Um, uh, which was composed by Richard Bellis and the main Twilight Zone theme composed by uh, Marius Constant. You're beckoned onto the ride by a load of creepy bellhops and then you're taken into a dark library filled with all these strange artifacts 
um, and once the lights come on or they come up slightly um, the TV set in the corner springs to life. Rod Sterling who was the creator of uh, the Twilight Zone show uh, welcomes you into your own journey into the Twilight Zone. From a secret passage you then um, shuffle down the sort of shadowy confines into uh, a boiler room um, which is really dilapidated um, and pretty much abandoned and there's loads of sort of rat rattling machinery um, and then you're brought into a service elevator uh, which takes you into the fifth dimension as you do. Once you've entered the rickety lift all the light bulbs above you sort of spookily flicker. What's really cool is that loads of bits that you do go through um, so when you get down to the boiler room and lots of the little sort of artifacts or whatever which are scattered around the hotel mm. they're all references to old episodes the lift sort of plummets down to the floor and then it goes up again and down again and up again over and over um, again. so it sort of repeats it quite a few times yeah um, up to 130 foot or 40 meters each time with the sound of sort of cables snapping and metal clamping and then go sort of flashing up which sort of aids to the terror of it yeah. all, um, which is just amazing it's, yeah um, but one of the things that does make it sort of such a good drop ride is the way it sort of goes up and down and up and down. Every time you think that it's done, one more thing's going to happen. Yeah. Because of how intense Tower of Terror is, you do have to be um, 1.02 meters to ride. It does have fast pass, but the lines don't tend to be that long. There are also versions of it, like we already said, in uh, Walt Disney World's Hollywood Studios, as well as Tokyo's Disney Sea and Disneyland's California Adventure. Um, which is now a Guardians of the Galaxy themed ride called Mission Breakout, um, which has been there since May. Um, and we really, really can't wait to go on that. It's also been rumoured that Disneyland Paris's Tower of Terror is going to be changed into a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. But I do also like the spooky element, which, oh, which I, is the thing I will miss. I'm really excited about it though, just because it gives them a good opportunity to update all the technology in it. Hmm. Um, so if they are, they are pretty much going to gut it and then put all the new stuff in there, so they, they're going to have all new animatronics, um, and then the ride drop sequencing and the screens and everything is all going to be brand new. Yeah. So there's a real chance to sort of upgrade it and. The one in California as well, people are going like crazy about it. people are raving about this. Yeah. It's really, really good. Yeah, so hopefully it will be another thing to draw people to uh, the Walt Disney Studios park. So that's it, guys. That's our top five rise attractions at Walt Disney Studios in Disneyland Paris. So let us know in the comments below what's your favourite ride or your favourite attraction. Uh, is there anything that we missed out or anything you really disagree with? Um, so please do give this video a like, a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and share it with any other Disney fans that might enjoy it too or find it useful for planning their uh, next Disneyland Paris holiday and subscribe so you don't miss our future videos. That's everything from us so thank you very much for watching. Remember to please subscribe uh, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye! Bye.